Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. A work program is planned for our Finland property that contains diamond-bearing kimberlite. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ADD, and the Frankfurt Exchange, symbol 82A1. Please visit our website at arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too, as well. President Trump has declared January to be Human Trafficking Awareness Month. What are you hearing on this? Well, it's certainly nice uh, that he's uh, at least giving lip service to the problem. The question remains, well, we need to see what he's going to actually do. Is it a big problem? Uh, yes, it is a major problem. And uh, there, there's trafficking uh, for sexual purposes, uh, including, unfortunately, children. And it is a tremendous problem uh, all over the world. In fact, out in California, there was apparently a high school teacher who just got arrested uh, for persuading two teenage uh, girls uh, to be, become prostitutes. So, yeah, it, it is an issue. If it's a month that he plans to have enforcement on, will it end after just one month? I don't think the enforcement would end after just one month. I think the idea is to try and get everybody thinking about the problem uh, and then follow it up possibly with some legislation. Unfortunately, uh, Donald Trump is facing a growing problem in the Congress. Uh, the Democrats don't really have anything to... Uh, offer the American people. They don't even have any leaders uh, that are highly regarded. So right now their agenda seems more and more to be simply opposing everything the Republicans are trying to do. And the Republicans still have an edge in the Congress, but the Democrats are hoping to reverse that this uh, coming November. So uh, Trump, Trump is being stymied on a lot of the things he wants to do. Saturday Night Live did a skit a few months ago showing the Democratic leadership being old and without ideas. Is that their biggest problem? I think it very much is, and there's been a lot of voices in the Democratic Party saying that the old leadership does need to gracefully fade away, especially Hillary Clinton, uh, and uh, allow some new blood and new ideas to come on in. But unfortunately, uh, people like Hillary Clinton, uh, they're, they're addicted to power, they're addicted to the wealth, uh, and my sense of it is she's seriously thinking about running again in 2020. Everybody I know just rolls their eyes when she does that. Does she know just how unpopular she is? Well, I don't think she really cares. Uh, we know that there was massive election fraud in last year's election, lots of illegal immigrants uh, voting Democrat, and more illegal immigrants pouring over the border every single day. Uh, I think Hillary Clinton, the reason that she didn't do that much uh, 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 rallies uh, is that uh, she thought she was going to be able to steal the election. Is there anybody with a Democratic background who could be a decent leader for them and, and show some fresh uh, ideas? Well, I would recommend Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, she's a representative from right here on the island of Oahu, and uh, she's got some very good ideas. She's very courageous. She's not always swimming with the flow. Uh, she went on over, and uh, uh, she's done some foreign uh, contacts with foreign leaders uh, that were deemed very unpopular. But, yeah, I, I would say if the Democrats are smart, uh, they'll put her out there. Do you think there will be a lot of swamp draining between now and World Freedom Day on February 1st? I would like to see it, but I think it's not going to happen because Donald Trump, instead of draining the swamp, has hired most of the alligators to be his White House staff. And as a result, he's completely controlled. Uh, he's being completely bamboozled. Uh, he's being convinced that a continuance of the war agenda is the only reasonable option. And he's out there talking tough with uh, Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Uh, and this thing about um, my, my nuclear button is bigger than your nuclear button, uh, it borders on the childish. And there's a photo of Donald Trump holding up two pieces of paper, and one has a little red dot, and it says Kim's button, and the other one has a big red dot, and it says Trump's button. And it's about as ludicrous as when Netanyahu held up that cartoon bomb at the United Nations. Just how dangerous is talk like that? It sounds like he's really daring Korea to send a missile. 
I think that would be the idea the, for the United States to declare war. It's always important that the American people think the other side struck first. And I'm very glad that we got through Christmas and New Year's without a false flag attack. Uh, but I've been noticing on the American corporate media today, they're really pushing the North Korea story. Uh, and it's crossed the line from being news reporting to being a sales campaign, in my opinion. Does it smack of what happened with both Iraq wars? Yes, it does. Uh, the, the demonization that, that preceded uh, both of those wars, uh, the demonization of Osama bin Laden that preceded 9-11, it's very clearly a propaganda operation. Is the U.S. government behind the protests in Iran? I suspect that they are at least partly. Could also be Israel. Could also be Saudi Arabia. Uh, apparently, they've already arrested one European in Iran who was trying to uh, incite violent protests. Uh, so, yeah, it, it looks like this is a repeat of 2009, which was the last time uh, they, they tried a covert coup d'etat. A lot of the Iranian protesters point out that their unemployment rate is near 40 percent, and they're upset that their country is spending a lot of money to fight in Syria and Iraq, and they feel the money should be spent at home. Any truth behind that? Well, uh, to some degree there is. We don't actually know how much Iran is spending in these uh, other theaters of combat. We only have the uh, corporate media saying Iran is here, Iran is there. Uh, these days, everything's getting blamed on Iran. Uh, apparently there was some uh, shelling uh, over in the Golan, and Israel's immediately saying, well, we know the shells came from Iran. So uh, at this point, it's hard to figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, the reason, of course, for the unemployment is very, very simple. It's all the sanctions that were placed on Iran uh, and never completely lifted despite the P5 plus 1 deal. And that's the reason for the hard economic times, and I'm sure the Iranian people understand that the reason uh, for the economic problems, the reason for the unemployment, uh, isn't the Iranian government, it's the U.S. government. Is the Department of Justice in the U.S. and the FBI corruption beyond comprehension? Well, it's way out there, and uh, uh, apparently uh, the uh, Department of Justice now has written evidence that the FBI thought Hillary Clinton was in violation of the law regarding her email server. So we're seeing the FBI, even knowing a crime has been committed, covering up for her. And uh, even now, with the finding of classified information on Huma Abedin's laptop, which is a Title 18 violation, they're still trying to cover for this whole mess uh, by saying that Huma Abedin didn't mean to put the information on the laptop. It was just carelessness. She didn't mean to do wrong, otherwise known as the Comey defense. But anybody who's read Title 18 understands intent is not required. The exposure of classified information in an insecure environment, that is the crime right there for which you can and should go to jail. Uh, and uh, again, what I suspect is going on is that uh, all the way back in 1994, Bill Clinton did a little deal where he was running for re-election. He needed a lot of money to come into his campaign coffers. And using his authority as president, he authorized the sale to China of highly sensitive military technology over the objections of the Defense Department and intelligence agencies. And Chinese money uh, poured through Chinese-American citizens to make it look legal into his re-election campaign. And there was an investigation called Chinagate, uh, but apparently some of the evidence was destroyed, and so it went nowhere. Uh, which reminds me, I don't know if you've heard this or not, part of the Clinton's Chipacua residence burned down today. So you got to be careful when you're burning incriminating evidence. It can get out of control there. So my question is this. I think the reason everybody is protecting Hillary Clinton uh, is not because they like Hillary Clinton. It's because I suspect Hillary Clinton was selling U.S. secrets to foreign interests using her weak email server to deliver the product and her so-called charitable foundation to collect and launder the money. And something like 40% of the wealth of the foundation came from foreign sources. And, uh, again, that's a scandal that could discredit the entire government and bring it crashing down. A serving Secretary of State committing espionage against our nation. And I think that's why people are trying to make this issue go away and protect Hillary Clinton. They're protecting their own jobs. Uh, they, they don't want to see the government uh, fall apart because then they're actually going to have to go out and get real employment. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break.
Glance Technologies owns and operates Glance Pay, a disruptive mobile payment technology now live in 16 cities in Canada and about to launch in the U.S. With revenues up 664% in the last quarter, Glance Technologies has the potential to be a worldwide leader in an industry projected to grow to $1.3 trillion in three years. Glance Technologies stock symbols are GLNFF in the U.S. and GET in Canada. Find out more at glancepay.com. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Magnum Gold Corp Inc., MGI on the TSX Venture Exchange. A 2015 drill program on the LH property intersected high-grade gold, including 16.9 meters of 13.58 grams and 11 meters of 20.66 grams per ton gold. A follow-up drill program is planned to further evaluate previously identified subsurface high-grade gold mineralization. Please visit our website at magnumgoldcorp.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, where is George Soros? Nobody really knows exactly where he is, but I imagine he's uh, sharpening his fangs for uh, the president of Hungary, uh, who seems to be an open war path uh, on George Soros and his empire. In fact, he made an interesting uh, little comment to the effect of, just as we defeated the Soviet empire, we'll defeat the Soros empire. And more and more people are understanding that all of this open border New World Order nonsense is being financed primarily by George Soros, and he's just in love with this idea of a one world government, presumably with his own rear end sitting on the golden throne of planet Earth, and is completely unconcerned with all the harm that this out of control migration uh, has brought to Europe and the United States of America. Uh, he's just oblivious to it. Uh, he just wants what he wants when he wants it and thinks that that's a force of nature. It's estimated 9,000 illegal immigrants poured over the border from the U.S. into Canada. Should we expect another huge wave of illegals uh, this summer? I would expect so, absolutely. I mean, they're going to go wherever they think they can get the best deal. Now, here in the United States, President Trump has put a five-year ban on uh, immigrants and refugees receiving welfare and social services uh, because so many of these migrants and refugees uh, come over the border, and the first thing they do is sign up for welfare. And so under the new rules, the uh, 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 migrant to this country will have to live here and work here, contribute to society, contribute to the economy for five years before they can even apply for welfare. And I think with that new rule, two things are going to happen. A lot of migrants and immigrants are just not going to come here at all, and those that are already here are probably going to be heading for the Canadian border in the hope that they're going to be able to get more free stuff up there. Well, they opened up Olympic Stadium as a temporary home for them in Montreal, probably again. Uh, probably uh, again, but I, I imagine uh, this harsh winter that we're in the middle of uh, might encourage a lot of these migrants from warmer climates to go back home. Uh, I think this is going to hit them really hard. Do we know where Julian Assange is? Well, I presume he's still in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, uh, but apparently as part of a larger lawsuit, uh, involving uh, WikiLeaks and Donald Trump, uh, they're, they're laying the legal groundwork for what they're calling a pre-pardon of Julian Assange. And uh, that, regardless of what you think of Assange, uh, enough is enough. I, I think it borders on cruel and unusual punishment. It's time to show a little bit of mercy. Should President Trump invite Canadian provinces to join the U.S. if they're not happy with all of Canada? Well, that's certainly in keeping with the uh, goals of the North American Union, uh, which wants to turn Mexico, the United States, and Canada into another version of the European experiment. But in looking at how that European experiment is working out, I don't think it's a really good idea. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after this. MGX Minerals is revolutionizing the new energy economy with patented lithium extraction technology replacing traditional solar evaporation using low-cost, low-energy nanofiltration. The first system of this paradigm shift technology is currently being commissioned. MGX Minerals trades on the CSE, symbol XMG, the OTCQB, symbol MGXMF, and Frankfurt, symbol 1MG. For more information, visit our website, mgxminerals.com. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, what's the state of health care in the U.S. right now? It is abysmal. We have the most expensive health care on Earth, and it's ranked somewhere down 33rd, 34th. Cuba's got better medical care than we do. 
And coupled with that, uh, the, this messing around with the health insurance program, uh, it, it's really resulted in a lot of people be literally being driven into bankruptcy by high medical costs that are not covered by the Obamacare policy. But now that Trump's new tax plan has removed the mandate, uh, I think we're going to go back to a situation in which we're going to see health insurance companies knowing they need to compete for customers, and that means lower premiums and better quality service. Have millions of children been cut off for medical care in the U.S.? Yes, unfortunately, uh, they have, and uh, it, it's what we're seeing are the lower uh, uh, classes in our society starting to drop out the bottom of the system. Uh, and our, our medical system really is all about money rather than care, and it has been ever since Richard Nixon signed the Health Care Maintenance Organization Act uh, and turned medicine from a service into a for-profit operation. And the profits are immense, uh, and all decisions made uh, by medical practitioners usually have at least one year to uh, potential payoffs. Uh, doctors are financially incentivized to push products like vaccines, like Gardasil, uh, even though these products have often been proved harmful or at the very least ineffective. Uh, there's a flu that is now raging across America, and it turns out the current flu shot is completely ineffective against it. But they're still saying people need to get the shot. Are there thousands of unsealed indictments in the U.S.? I've heard that story from several different locations, coupled with a lot of speculation that this is going to be the uh, the final downfall of the Clintons, or it's going to rip open an elaborate child sex ring operating in Washington, D.C. And we know bad things are done by the elites. There was the Franklin scandal back when Bush was in the White House uh, that involved uh, child sex trafficking. But this feels, it doesn't feel real to me. Uh, there's way too much speculation. We don't know what's in those sealed indictments. We only know they're sealed indictments. And until they're unsealed, we have no idea what's in them. And so I'm very, very cautious about this story because of its highly speculative nature. Have some U.S. airports temporarily shut down? Uh, yes, for two reasons. One is, of course, the major storms all over the eastern seaboard. Uh, Monday night, the busiest uh, travel uh, night of the year after the New Year, uh, apparently the computers that check for board, uh, passports and visas uh, broke down all across the country at all of the international borders. And uh, that resulted in horrendous long lines, people missing flights, uh, and it begs the question of why they don't have a backup system, given how much confusion and uh, uh, anger follows a breakdown. Has Obama been linked to any wrongdoing? He has not been linked to any wrongdoing. The Robert Mueller Trump uh, collusion investigation has drawn a total blank. Even the Democrats on his panel are saying so. Seven million dollars in all this time. They did get a couple of indictments against Trump associates, but they were all for actions unconnected to the election campaign and unconnected to Russia. But the corporate media is still trying to push this story that Russia somehow helped Donald Trump steal the election from Empress Hillary the first. Are there U.N. vehicles on U.S. soil? Uh, yes, there are, but uh, there are U.N. vehicles on a lot of different places. Uh, since the United Nations is headquartered here, it stands to reason there would be some U.N. vehicles here. But I don't think, uh, I, I don't agree with this suggestion uh, that the U.N. is getting ready to try and take over this country. Is newly elected Alabama Senator Doug Jones a voice of reason for the Democrats? Uh, so far, he's saying what the Democrats want to hear, and of course that was the hallmark of his campaign. What he's actually going to do, we don't know. Uh, and again, a lot of people are absolutely convinced that that election was also fraudulent, uh, because Doug Jones was this sudden come from behind, uh, character, uh, to get another Democratic seat, uh, in the Senate. And I expect that unless Donald Trump's Commission on Election Integrity actually starts doing its job in the next few months, we're going to see more massive election fraud this November. Is the Anthony Weiner laptop investigation exposing Hillary? Uh, yes, it does, because everything that is being found tracks back to Hillary. It was Hillary's decision to set up the private email server. Uh, Hillary was warned about using the BlackBerry. Hillary was sending out these classified emails. Uh, and so ultimately, the reason Huma Abedin uh, is in this trouble right now does track back to Hillary Clinton. And ultimately, uh, it should. 
And Donald Trump is literally telling the Department of Justice it's time for some prosecutions here. But apparently Attorney General Jeff Sessions, like his predecessor, uh, is dedicated to protecting the big dark secret of what Hillary was really using that email server for. Is Sessions actually doing a good job behind the scenes? Not that I can tell. Uh, he seems to be another deep state politician. Uh, he's there to protect his cronies and his friends from the legal consequences of their actions. Is there anything new in the pedophile investigations? Not really. That's kind of fizzled on out. And a lot of people are, again, out there with a lot of speculation uh, that something may break in that. Uh, but, uh, uh, again, uh, it's a scandal that nobody wants to see come on out. Back when the Franklin scandal happened, there was actually a documentary made about it, and it was scheduled to air on American TV. And apparently several members of Congress uh, went to the broadcaster, I, I think it was PBS, and they literally threatened, they said, if you air this, we will write laws that will drive you out of business. And so PBS pulled the video, and then some unknown party bought up all the VHS copies. And the only reason we know about it today is there was an editing work tape uh, that survived, uh, and it's now available on YouTube where you can watch this. It was a big, stinky scandal. Most people don't know about it, but it reached all the way to the White House. Was the so-called Nigerian prince who emailed everyone arrested? Yes, they finally tracked this one guy down, uh, turned out to be an American, and it, it amazes me that people can be that gullible uh, where they would fall for a scam like that. But I guess if you've been raised all your life just being conditioned to believe what you're told by TV and believe what you're told by politicians, that, that you might be uh, a, an easy mark for a smooth talker, or in this case, a smooth emailer. Can canola oil affect your memory? Apparently, it can help boost your memory, and there's a lot of natural plants that are good for your brain and memory. And as we talk more and more about marijuana decriminalization, and now you can buy recreational marijuana in California, uh, it, it, that, that actually stimulates the growth of brain cells. Uh, you know, uh, alcohol will kill brain cells. Uh, same thing with nicotine. Marijuana actually helps your brain to grow smarter. How is the climate change industry doing under President Trump? Well, obviously Trump has pulled out of the Paris Accord correctly. Uh, and the climate change industry is not doing very well because we're having yet another record-setting winter. Uh, it snowed in Tallahassee, Florida today, and the last time that happened was 28 years ago. And uh, people are not fooled by this attempt to change global warming to climate change. Uh, they, they remember back in 2000 when everybody was saying, there'll be no more snow, there'll be no more ice, and it's all the fault of you humans. And here we are again with another record-setting winter. Uh, and I, I, I think this human-caused global warming uh, uh, agenda has had its day. A lot of people have made a tremendous amount of money off of it, uh, but I, I think people are really beginning uh, to wake up and realize it, it's another in a long series of scams and lies by government and big media. Yeah, one of the ironies, Alberta, where they have minus 40 temperatures, their wind farms don't work because there's no wind when it's that cold. So... Well, that, that is really something. And, you know, with all the uh, people who are out there screaming, get rid of oil and get rid of gas, they haven't proposed an attractive, ready-to-go alternative. And, yes, if you are overcast and windless, uh, then your solar panels won't work uh, and your wind farms won't work and large-scale storage of, of electricity is still a pipe dream. Is there biowarfare testing in the U.S.? Yes, there is. Um, many people are surprised to find on out. It's actually legal. There's actually a United States law saying that the military can, when they feel it's necessary, test biowarfare systems on the civilian population without so informing them. Usually it's very benign. Uh, there have been a couple of accidents. There, there was a uh, delivery system being tested in San Francisco, and they loaded it up with what they thought was a minor uh, illness, and then they were just going to track hospital reports to see where it had gotten into and unfortunately, the pathogen was a little stronger than they thought, and there were a few deaths. But yes, uh, we can be experimented on by our own government. And one of the headlines on your website, if you get a sex robot, it could be hacked, it could attack you and actually kill you. Is that true? <laughs> well, so could an angry girlfriend. So, But I think the reason people go out and get sex robots is they don't want to have to deal with angry girlfriends. Yeah, I, I, I'm beginning to see the wisdom in that. Now, I'm lucky. I've got a wonderful marriage and a wonderful wife. Uh, but when you look at how wacko some of the more militant feminists have become, 
uh, yeah, it, it's almost like it, it's not worth the pain and the problem. Michael, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. You're listening to The Goddard Report. I am Jim Goddard. Have a great new year. Comments made on The Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of Howe Street Media Incorporated.